needs a little bit more work, but I do have a template for writing a uh, Amiga DOS driver, uh, which sets up the whole uh, interface. I'm not sure if I can show it yet uh, on here, because I, I sourced it. You know, I, I, it's, it's inspired from other source pieces, and, and I don't know if I want to show it publicly yet. But it will. Um, it does the whole process for you. Sets up the resident. Uh, and you know, so it creates itself as a library, and it sets up the device structure, uh, provides the uh, the interface uh, for opening up a device and uh, begin I/O and, and everything, and then it you know spawns off the unit structure. So the whole idea is that you're you know it's like here is a build buildable running device driver, Amiga DOS style that doesn't do anything yet. I mean, this is so now you can just jump right in and start filling in the back end. You know, with the hardware and stuff like that. So I'd like to get some of that uh, more of the template stuff out there. But of course, the next big thing on the, uh, AD <coughs> that's been long, long uh, withstanding is the GUI builder. Mm -hmm. um, I GUI builder needs major updates. In fact, the latest um, OS broke it in new ways. So I'll have to figure <laughs> out. Uh, what actually had a pile of updates over the past you know, seven some. Yeah. All that were assigned to particularly. Yeah. Well, um, unfortunately, I was I was drawn back into the the corporate black hole for about five years, and uh, you know I, I I didn't have any any time to, to work on it, and you know, but I I did a whole other project uh, that I wouldn't mind bringing over to uh, to Amigo S, but it's it's written entirely in, in the Qt framework in C so. I don't know, maybe. The uh, but it's it's a it's a totally different different beast. But I, it is another creation tool. Um, it was designed to to build uh, reports for uh, out of energy data. So it has a, a designer and stuff like that. And I, I figured out a lot of things that I can bring over into the uh, ABD stuff as you do. You know, you, you work on something else. Oh, that would be good. I can use that a little different over here in this this piece of code. You know, learn from it and stuff like that. So, cool. so yes, it's definitely it's, it's not. You know, I know, I know it's been a really long time. The SDK browser. I you know I I was looking at it and realized in 2016. It's like, has it been 10 years since I released an update? I was gonna when I was there in 2010. I was gonna release 2.0, and I just never got to it because there was one or two things I needed to fix and. <coughs> Sitting on 2.0 for 10 years, and and then, and then I rolled out the update for it. And so, and what shocked me the most, unfortunately, is I, that it's I, perfectly normal in the Amiga world. Well, it's, it's true. It's not it's <laughs> great, but it's, it's normal. What what surprised me the most, quite honestly, is that <coughs> it, is how little the content of the SDK had changed in 10 years. I mean, I still, I, I expected holes to be filled in. I, I, I kept giving hints. I mean, it's the SDK browser. Anytime you go to a uh, well, like library or, or whatever, it can't find any documentation for it. I'm sure, I'm going to hit everything up. There you go. That's one. No? Not on inside. Let's see what do we have. Can you add math? It's the one I always hit right from the beginning, I think. There you go. No auto doc was found. You're the author. How about writing one? What? Amy has to sell. I mean, there is <laughs> there is some documentation, of course, for some of this stuff, but it's just not here. You know, which is the <coughs> problem. The whole the whole idea with the SDK browser was to hopefully reveal everything that's inside the SDK and get it you know quickly. Um, uh, to you, you know, so, uh, but there's, you know, so there's, there's still a ton more features that I would like to add, and, and if there's something that you want, uh, you know, in particular for the SDK browser, you know, by all means let me know, because I can, you know, make that a, a priority as far as adding, adding something, as long as it's not too huge, but there is, I, I am going to have to replace using the main uh, text editor uh, gadget on there, because it's just, it's too limiting. Uh, but it was it was good to to visualize it. 
you know, just to just to say, okay, well now I could I could parse all of these. You wouldn't believe what I was working on before this. What led up to that? <laughs> it was the whole. It was it was an assembly. <laughs> Seven hundred libraries. <laughs> But uh, but then I, I stumbled across the uh, the interface XML files and it's like well I could just parse these out you know and then it's like boom and it's like no you've got that tree display and it's like well I want to be able to, to see the autodoc that corresponds with that function start piecing it together and very quickly it became the SDK browser and then just starting you know full features on there so I hope that you know people have gotten use out of it uh, over the years I know I have I use it all the time. Yeah, it is, it's a very useful local ed tool. I mean, that's a nice little flaw, actually. That's great. It's yeah. great to hear. You know, I like to, and I'm, I'm trying to make it um, faster, of course. I figure that, you know, if you, you take all of that disk I.O. from parsing <coughs> thousands of files on open, and you boil it down to a cache file that you've already saved out, then it just has to rip through that one file. You know, so, and then I, then I was looking, researching the, uh, uh, the P5020 chip, and looking at the uh, pattern matching engine mm -hmm. uh, in the chip, and that's very exciting. I'd love to be able to drop in uh, regular expression searches, uh, hardware accelerated, mm -hmm. uh, and just generally, you know, tear through the parsing operations with uh, with you know, very little CPU interaction. Would be kind of the ultimate goal. And of course, once you can tap into something like that, you use the same mechanism to create your context highlighting on the fly and. Everything because it's all about just finding it fast. You know, that's been one of the problems with the context sensitive highlighting coming into earlier Amiga text editors. You know, like especially on the classic machines, as they started to emerge in other on other platforms, it's really tough to bring it over onto you know the classic machines because it just didn't have the speed. You know, it needed the raw raw processing, always looking at that file and re-changing it on the fly. You know, and that's where um, dynamic, uh, you know, uh, browsing of the source file. I mean, I, I used that within the, the Cube Creator for, you know, three years on one project, and it's tremendous. I mean, to be able to just go, where does that function again? <laughs> F2, bam, you know, there it is. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, Codebench started to do some of that, and I'd like to check out the new version because it, you know, if it keeps going. But the idea that you can, you know, create a new header file, define something, pop over to its corresponding C file, start typing it, and auto-complete. Oh, I, I just learned that. Well, that's, yeah. what they have, that's what Simon has in code mention. That's amazing. Yeah, right. Amazing it's helpful, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Particularly when he's, in, when he's parsing through all the system include files, too. So yeah. one of the biggest problems that I have is a uh, lump and newbie. I'm creating some object using Alex's, you know, tag or whatever. I don't know all the, I don't know, remember all the tags fields I have to fill in. But the beauty with this system is I can just keep tabbing through them. And it's really, really helpful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, it's it's now, since the last time I looked at it, and I, I talked to Simon uh, quite a bit. He was one of the very first supporters, actually, of, of ABD. He talked about how he had this idea about writing an IDE because we needed it so badly, but he really didn't want to write it. You know, he would prefer I did. You know, and, and so I was working on it, but then, you know, I got pulled away from having work on it for so long, he picked it back up again and, you know, kept going with it. His, so his stuff is definitely much, much better in the, in, from, my, from my view, it's much better as a, a project management, you know, more of a, more of a classic IDE. Yeah. Uh, what it's missing, um, unless something just pops up that I don't know about, uh, the uh, the GUI builder uh, part of it for so dynamically, you know, creating graphical interfaces native within Reaction and your extended set of, of stuff. I mean, that's that's not there. He did he did implement a, a, an Autodoc viewer. Mm -hmm. I know that. And I think one of the <coughs> biggest um, one of the biggest reasons I heard about uh, for you know going with something simpler. Uh, on there was the uh, was the initial load time of the SDK browser because on the slower machines especially it could take like you know you got a slow IDE drive and it could take like 30 seconds to set up the first time once it's loaded 
it's in, it's in RAM and it's instant. But some people, I don't know, maybe they just want, didn't want to keep it in memory, but, uh, or, or what the problem was. But Yeah, I prefer this though because with the keyboard I can keep moving between fields and, and, and keep searching and drilling down much more. Yes. Possible. Yes, I, so I, it's very fast. I really like the. Yeah, if you know what you're looking for, that yep. uh, this is this is very 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 fast. Space bar, you know, yeah. take and, and yep. jump into the tab through sections. Yeah, and of fast. course now I'm I'm in an auto dog, you know, a library doesn't have an auto dog, but you know, so and then you, there's pieces it's like it's got the main resource one, but doesn't have something for that function. You know, that's. One of the things I noticed when I put this together, how how much the SDK browser pointed out the holes within, <laughs> within the SDK, because you're, it, it went to the heart of it and said, I'm going to parse the interface and find out what's in the libraries, and then I'm going to present it to you. Whereas every other Autodoc viewer I've ever seen just focused on displaying the Autodocs themselves and breaking up those files. It didn't start from the basis of the library you know, creation. So. So yeah, but yeah, there's lots of there's lots of uh, other things that I, I am gonna take and do with I'm, I'm hoping the momentum will continue. I mean now I'm I'm actually back at the moment uh, programming full time uh, for Amigo S4 stuff. So I'm hoping that that's going to be able to keep going and and I'll be able to get back to, to stuff because as as you know I mean once you you, you get into um, the zone with your coding, you know, it's like, you, and you just, now stuff just starts coming in all, all over the place, you know, it's like, oh, so the stuff that you were, you're working on just starts to come together, you know, pieces just fall into place, you know, whereas if you, you haven't touched it for you know, 10 years, then you, it takes a little while to get back up to, it's like, what did I do? I don't even remember what I did. You know, which is why this thing was just, is tremendously helpful, because it's like, <laughs> What, how, what did I write? I mean, I, you're showing stuff on like the, the, the AROX folks and stuff, and I'm going, I'm thinking to myself, did I do it that way? <laughs> it was 10 years ago, so I don't remember exactly, but I can search my own source code and find, find it very quickly. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think that what we need is, um, you know, much, of course, much better, more comprehensive documentation, but examples. My God, you, you, you have to have working examples of how you pull this stuff together. You know, especially if you're, you know, you're, you're new to it. Because you're reading through it and going, you know, you're running across terms that you have no idea what they reference to. But if you can see it in code, especially if you're a programmer coming from another platform, you can see it in code, it's like, that's the truth. You know, and this is, you know, can be tough to to chew through until you get your mind wrapped around how all of the Amiga stuff is supposed to work, then it becomes easier. But yeah, if I had my way, we'd have an example program, working example, ready to build for every single function and every single Absolutely. You know, have you seen the Spark Tree example from your, a few years back, from like when this stuff kind of started? Uh, maybe. So I, mean, yeah, I don't I, think so. That's, that, that example is how I first started how to figure out how to use reaction library and, and how to actually interact with the processes and, uh, and it's all very simple stuff. It wasn't like terribly complicated set of the source, but it was very, very helpful and it led me into the book of the auto docs and the examples are really great when they're that comprehensive. Yeah, I've got it. Somebody found it useful. There's one. <laughs> yeah. See, this is why I love using this. You know, because it just, this is my go-to tool to find stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, everywhere. Oh, it's looking through the ISO. Sparse, sparse. Wait, the lab in 4D. <laughs> what are they having you do, Stephen? Uh, what are you signed up for? I have amazing love <laughs> 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 Name a project. I'll sell Helga's team out here. Web's yeah. not nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> By the way, I actually found, I actually found in um, uh, Amiga Computing Magazine from 1996, 
a letter that he wrote in that they published. He who? Oh, interesting. Uh, Hella, uh, really? Uh, yeah, Helga. And in the, in, the, in the thing, he's actually, it ha he really is the same sort of chap. And in the letter, he's, he wants, you know, we want 24-bit audio, and he wants the media to take the world, and oh, it's amazing. He's had these dreams now for 20 years. What year was that? 96. 96. 96. Interesting. Amiga Computing Magazine, issue either 7 or 11. It's back in the house. Wow. Yeah. Helmut Fall in oh, Norway. That's so honest. It is. <laughs> I just think I'm thinking, it's wow. It's very honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True, I guess. Yeah. Hasn't changed. Yeah. yeah. So, I think we pushed oh. it a little too hard. Uh, Stumbled, stumbled across something that wasn't quite well, quite right. <laughs> <laughs> you pushed too hard, didn't you? Well, I've been doing a lot of weird stuff. So. <laughs> okay. Wow. So now it's almost four. So do we want to continue for the day? Are there any other topics you wanted to cover today? Not at four. <laughs> Late. Anything you want to go through? The nuts ready. Pardon me, so what time did you begin? 930. Yeah, I didn't I guess I misunderstood the schedule. I had this impression that this started mid late afternoon. I uh, the show does. It's like one year we talk about starting mid late afternoon on Wednesday. Early, early on. Remember we were gonna set up and get Well that was when, that was like years back. Yeah, yeah, years and years back. That was just a setup. No, we always start at 9.30. It was 9, but then people can't see the up. Too much drinking. <laughs> Bad smelling things. How long did you just stop drinking? I'm trying to stop. Yes. Trent Trevor, Trent Trevor is a, a paragon of sobriety. Paragon of sobriety. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The stuff you come up with. I don't know why you're laughing, Scott. <laughs> you got your. Um, you don't have candy on this thing. Uh, I do, but I have turned it on. I've got a copy of the one you're just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you're my off of thinking. Off of, uh, off of his, probably. The filter. Oh, yeah, what I do? Uh, he would be so. That's probably right. Probably just a drama. The hmm? HP, right. uh, so, uh, so you did the same no, thing on his machine. I know, I saw that. Oh, so did mine. Yeah. But yeah. It, then it was fun. Yeah. SDK browser, you would? Uh, yeah. It's probably it should be that one. Yeah, that's a long time. Uh, 2017 directory, uh, right? If, you, if anybody's got a registered version of the SDK browser, I can build your custom one for you as well. Oh. Well, I was one of the. I think you just gave me one of those. Did it? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, you got to set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was one of the ABD people, so that should get. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. If, yes, if you supported the ABD project, if you donated ten bucks, I'd give you the whole thing. Oh, I think I did ten bucks ten times or something like that. Yeah, I, I broke it down into really yeah. small yeah. things to help people out. They actually got quite a bit of response off of that. They liked it. Oh, yeah. Ten dollars a month for. At some point, would you have some time to talk about some small uh, stuff? Yes, yes. Um, sure. There you go. put $200 in. So, uh, I don't know how much you can say, Andy, though, because we have to do a project. He's <laughs> <laughs> got that twitch going. <laughs> the twitch. <laughs> Every time I see that, I think of Inspector Dreyfus and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there, is a, there is a couple things that I want to take in, that I am planning on doing with the. Uh, <coughs> the Xena chip and, and the Zoro slot. Um, are you going to overwrite your old one, or you did, are you going to do it? Is it, is it updated? Or are you talking about code bench? Oh, um, yeah. Because my dream is to build like an RF stage on one of those projects, but I can't do it with the project board that um, uh, I got from the meeting that I'm working with. But, uh, yes. For a variety of reasons, but um, I really want to build an RF stage because I really want to build a what? SDR. What are you doing, Mr. Mm -hmm. oh, I really, really want to do that. Huh? So, oh, so okay. that I can have like a where do you want your yeah? Let's see what installer is using. I um, 
Uh, I've been working with, uh, uh, with Big on the Lake on, on, on building a better project board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so and, and one of the things oh, I wanted yeah, to do was a, um, totally a starter custom, and to demonstrate the source, which I've released with it, is that you're, you know, you've, so you've got a, uh, a project board yeah. and it would have uh, two 9 pin ports on it for joystick and keep and uh, mouse and, and a, a PS2 so style, you know, mini din for yeah, the that's keyboard. The other way you can tell. And then it would have a header for uh, two it more uh, right? 9 pin. Yeah. Well, so I'm right uh, well, the implementation of the uh, uh, joystick mouse, you know, uh, input feeds yep. to now, demonstrate how to bring it up into Amigo S4. So with, with the project board that I got from me, <coughs> um, I got really frustrated at one point because it, you know, oh, my love and push to uh, I eventually just desoldered everything, okay. and like yeah. instead, I took each lane yeah. and I um, wired it to a big breadboard that I have externally. So it's basically, mm -hmm. basically yes. 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 hooked it up to a breadboard so that I can yes. do actual prototype. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what I want. Is I really want I really want a, a, a breadboard on Oops. a board. Yeah. 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 Why would it crash? That's on the that would be ideal. Why is it backwards? Oh good. And, and hopefully Daniel will be doing the work and then outstanding. Yeah. One of the things that was key on the, the new project board is uh, uh, a re implementation of uh, Lyle Hazelwood's original uh, SD card storage in using oh, wow. the uh, uh, the Hazel okay. mm -hmm. so that you can get the <coughs> hopefully megawatt speed. Uh, capture off of the serial uh, right onto the, yeah. the car. That, that would be so, awesome. Well, yeah. yeah. So Especially for graphics drive at the top Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's for everybody because then I can dump everything oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. But when, yeah. you're, <laughs> when your graphics driver is outputting <laughs> wow. massive, information, massive information as it's drawing stuff on the screen. Oh yes, um, <laughs> there's a lot of. Evidence. You're trying to catch. <laughs> yeah. you're trying it's to like catch something. something you're trying to find through some bug fixes and yeah, so it's 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 spell it's checking. Hang with it. Yeah. 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 Spell checking. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And that's so. Now they. There's there's a, with the read speed from the bypass, uh, we should be able to to achieve <coughs> full uh, up to like uh, three megabits. Uh, okay. Speed because I think that the lines for the Xeon chip are the Xbox chip are that. The, uh, it says you got a duplicate uh, ID. You can't unfortunately yeah. Yeah, write it's it back. It's happening, it's uh, happening at the same speed. speed. Hotels code. It still ends up taking oh, it going up that. through the mother chip. And so it's limiting it to a 250k VOD write. But for most of what the capture is, it's all read, so it's coming down at speed, you know. But the well, idea of like yes, trying to use yes, it as a two-way communication yeah. is I was looking at all the different possibilities, like how can you yeah. talk oh, it's with small. this Zorro? I mean, what are all the ways you can get back to the system? Oh, you know, and of course there's there's IO lines with the uh, uh, Xena chip. Didn't even notice that. There's also the inline PCIe 1X <laughs> slot, so you've got potentially you know five uh, gigabit a second there, and uh, you know there's so I'd like to see how fast. You know, you can you can push things yeah. and then communicate back and forth. But one thing I really miss uh, with new machines is a, a bridge of the classic Amiga feel, and I I, I really miss my Amiga keyboard uh, with true Amiga keys that map correctly, um, and that's one of the reasons why I want to do that uh, project board where it's like now I can hook up my classic joystick and keyboards, you know, and with a uh, with a, uh, an, ad an adapter, you can support you know every form of external keyboard except for the Amiga 1000, which with another adapter you could do that anyway. Cool. You know, so it would do would do all of them. And I think it would be a nice a nice demo project because it's something that I can write up, continue the, the blog series that I started, mm -hmm. and just you know talk about how to to work through it. Um, I'm also uh, I was I was looking at building uh, the uh, uh, the C compiler uh, for it. I didn't get very far the first time with it because uh, I was running into stuff like having too old a version of AutoConf. Is there XC? Is there are there XC Jolt Tango? Is it completely open? Is it? Uh, the one that um, uh, <laughs> Segar Boston Cool. Yeah, um, he's an X. He is an XMOS guy. 
that Lyle was working with okay. uh, directly, and he connected me through. So I, I contacted Lyle originally when I was trying to figure out this chip, and I knew that he worked on the uh, uh, the X Sentinel project, which I, I still don't know exactly what happened to that. Um, but I know he was still working on more code for it, so that might have been the reason why it never released as a no, product. You, you speak to uh, Alex Perez. He now has the all of the line stuff. He has the board, the lines, the windows. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
graphical thing to it because the manager, the ultimate idea with the manager is that it'll let you decide, the user decide what is running out at the moment. So it's like if you put this the, the board in uh, project board and you've got you know up to four joystick boards and, and stuff like that, saying oh I want to tie that in as real I, a real input to my emulator system and you know run some classic arcade games or anything like that with real you know real joysticks or anything like that. So you can decide that right now I want that to be running on you know however many threads it needs to manage that. And the, you know, and then I also want this other thing running on it, and this other thing, and you know, kind of visually be able to see what's running on the chip, you know, and dynamically take it off and they have new stuff because you can, you know. So it's a it's a resource on the on the box that I I love to be able to exploit. A lot of people really also like some, you know by trailblazing you know, allows them really to help people figure out what to do with yeah. it. I figured to create a project board that is a lot easier uh, to uh, approach, you know, because it's a, it's a lot more comfortable for people to take and say, oh, I can hook up a serial line, or I can hook up a joystick or whatever to this, you know, and like, it's your code, so it's like, here's the example of how to use these 9-pin ports as joystick and mouse, but you can do whatever you want, you know, it's just general I.O. So the, um, you know, and it's a lot, so I think for a lot of project work, and of course there's a lot of uh, 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 embedded, uh, you know, PCs, and you've know, got all this little hobby stuff, and a lot of it still uses just serial yeah. communication, so it's like, hey, I want to control my external Hard whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to do a lot of work with um, uh, uninterruptible power supplies, yeah. and communicating with those. Cool. You know, so, in fact, I wrote a version of uh, our checkup software years ago for the Nico S. At the time, I was uh, I, I got them to buy me a four thousand tower uh, that I was actually using for everyday development. I was uh, it was running the, uh, fourteen different Unix builds across the lab, so I I was running uh, Cygnus Ed with an extensive ARX script, and I just sit in my office and go, "That's what I'm go AIX, HP, Sun OS, go 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 all the way around the room." And uh, I actually found that, that yeah. script the other day. I still haven't seen this. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not. You don't want them. But uh, yeah, it was, it was brilliant because, it, I mean, the Amiga uh, ran the whole thing. And it, it went, it updated the compile on every single one of the machines, sending all the feedback, you know, back to the room. You could see the build. You know, and then you could stop it at different intervals, so you could just let it roll through. And if I let it roll through to completion, it built all the latest versions, pulled all the binaries together, pulled it over to the Amiga, mastered it as an ISO, and wrote it out to the CD. And that was the distro. So, you know, <laughs> after I left, I, it was all 100% on the Amiga uh, uh, 4000 tower. You know, and, and then, but as is the nature, as I found in the, in the industry, is like you get key people within a given company that know about the Amiga and they, they pursue it to that level, and they actually get to use the Amiga within the company, and, and it does things. I mean, when I went to, uh, we were buying new machines, and I was in charge of, uh, of uh, Unix machines at that time, and it's like, okay, we're going to get new machines. You know, so everybody's like, ah, oh, I want the, the latest PC, this PC, that, whatever. And I was like, none of those, there's no PC on the planet that can do me, you know, any better than what, I, what I've got now. They're, they're pathetic at their interactions with Unix and Linux as a whole. They're still not all that great. Uh, you know, so the Amiga was definitely the thing to go. So I went to the computer uh, engineering and said, I could, I could you know, pick one of these guys, give me the latest SGI, the latest HP, you know, $15,000, $30,000 for box. You know, or I could get a machine for five thousand dollars. I could really, I could really do the job. And fortunately, he only asked me one question: you know, Will it increase your productivity? And said, yeah. And it wasn't until I actually got the machine in and started using it that it, that I uh, found out how much. I mean, people would come to me uh, to uh, take and, and solve all these different problems. It's the, the Amiga was the, the only machine in the building that could accomplish certain things. These guys work better than any of the As it turned out, I didn't even I didn't realize this, but at the time, inside the same company, there was another video toaster. You know, so it was hidden away with the uh, media guy, and they were using it, creating a, a, 
they, so, you know what? Dynamic slideshow presentations that they fed in the loop throughout the, the, the building. So you have these big, like 30 inch CRTs. And it's kind of hanging up there. All the way around, he was running all this video. I'm, I'm watching it do the dynamics, like, you know, quarterback. He's fading too back. And it does the same thing all the time. Oh, I did this. I bought one of Matthew's white But then, when that person leaves, it's done. Uh, but you know, I gave when, when I left, it it came, made, there was nobody that could pick it up. So this is all you know, from me. So I kept the hard work. I also wonder if you explore <laughs> games and look. So if you, so I don't see like games. Everything is black and I want to be the main reason I do the variety. I mean, people like enjoying the scene. True. And if you drop any kind of thing, it's not just video trips, right? But these schools are seeing you like the main reason you do the same thing. Especially in the United States, yeah. In the U.S., other than games and music, these are not really used for much. This is they weren't popular. Now, see, I get those. I found that once you got one, you know, with it, yeah, people, you know, people started using them for absolutely everything. Yeah, here in the States, I'm swapping. Well, it was always clustered, wasn't it? I mean, you get one, you get one person. Yeah. They got an Amiga, and boom, there's 15 other people right around them that all got it. You know, it's like once you've seen the machine, it was a foregone conclusion. The only Amiga I ever encountered, or the only Amiga I ever encountered prior to buying Sam, we used the Bangladesh version. But no, I was just saying it worked out. I didn't specify because it's a Amiga version. They were using a Titan. I do enjoy the, the uh, looking back at the, uh, the original machines. I mean, that's, that's, at one point, is a, whenever I had spare time, I, I, I printed out the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the Commodore 128 Programmer's Reference Guide. Uh, I, had to, I had to reproduce it because I couldn't find a copy anywhere. So I, I found in the internet archive, I found a PDF version. I printed out a big three ring binder. And Those were wonderful. I carry the thing around. It's like just wonderful. flipping through and, and, and just studying the thing. We had a C4, like, right? And, and the yeah. manual that came with it was basically a manual on, on how to write uh, basic code. Yeah. Right? And it was wonderful. It was brilliant. It was wonderful. When we got the, the 1541, it came with this massive developer book about um, using DOS on the drive. Because the controller in the 1541 was more powerful than the 62 and the 64. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, like, computers used to come with that kind of documentation, and you had to kind of roll your own stuff, and it was really, really, really kind of cool. And that's kind of the thing about the Xmas that you're talking about. Uh, it'd be nice to have that kind of magic again. Yes, it would. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of hidden magic in the uh, of the P5020 uh, and the P5040 uh, that I would you know love to be able to bring to the surface. I mean, just because one of the—I mean, one of the things that made the Amiga great, of course, was the fact that it had like you know 25 DMA check. This one, it just had the ability to offload so much from the CPU. That's why it didn't need a fast CPU. I mean, once you started to shift that code, you started to take and throw stuff in there that that you didn't have custom chips to specifically do. So now, yeah, it's all the CPU, and then and of course you've got the the PC versus Amiga Wars and everything like first-person perspective video games. And oh my God. We have to have all this horsepower to do that. Didn't mean they were good. I well, personally didn't enjoy them too much. Well, I kind of liked them. I thought it was pretty sweet. No, there are. Um, I, I really admired it from a technical achievement. 
And I, I played a little bit, but it was not really. I was a, I was a bit more of a platformer guy. Uh, for I like a lot of the platform games and uh, Shadow of the Beast and, and stuff like that. Just you know, 13 levels of parallax scrolling and all that, <laughs> which is uh, very, very cool. Well, you know, the platform games I played were all on the NES. Yeah. The little eight bit system. Yep. Super Mario Brothers. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, two and classics. Yeah. I still I still maintain that Super Mario Brothers three is like one of the best jump and runs ever. Yeah. But so I I, I like I like the whole range. Um, I, I've got all of the. Everyone? No, I don't have every single classic Amiga system. I have a couple of them I don't have, um, like a 2500 or a 600. But I've got talk to Trevor. Maybe he's got some spares. <laughs> <laughs> he probably does. I'm sure he yeah. does. I was. I was. Have you been over to his castle to see the collection? No, not in I was talking to, to Aaron about uh, the fact that I I ran across this professor in the uh, uh, University of Whitewater that had. Basically salvaged all of the Amiga stuff out of their like graphics department. Where was that one time? University of Whitewater. Oh, okay. In uh, Wisconsin. The uh, and he had collected all of this stuff, but he really didn't know what all of it was. So I went over to take a look at it, and he had a, an Amiga 2500, uh, which was kind of a surprise. It's the first time I'd actually seen one. Uh, you know, I. Four 2000s, and my 2000 was really kind of my go-to one. I had a 500 first, but I really wanted that big box 2000. I went to that as soon as I could. The uh, and then you know I've got all the the rest of the machines, and the rest of the 4000 towers. I got a pair of those guys and the whole thing. But I hadn't seen a 2500 with the original 14 megahertz accelerator board and the special uh, pre-boot. You know, hold down the mouse buttons, you get like, yeah. well, you want 68,000 or 020? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? It's like, oh my God, it's a 2500. So I happened to mention it to uh, to, to Aaron uh, just the other day, and he's it was like, you know, he hadn't heard of it before, and he didn't have it in his collection, so immediately he was bidding on one. So oh, see, I didn't know I didn't know Aaron collected the the, the classic stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, more and more. Not anything like Trevor. But um, well, you'd be hard pressed to find something like that. Well, yeah, it takes, it takes you know years to yeah. to build that stuff up. I personally, I've only got like 15 machines myself, so the uh, I just I like to have at least one. Jamie, are you married? Uh, not I was, and not yet. Okay. So uh, now, the reason why I asked that is, is because you said only 15, and I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> how you were able to swing that because that's impressive. <laughs> only. My well, wife can kill me. So tired of all this stuff. One of the uh, and now the kids love these things. She's just she's like, oh, we're gonna get more of them. And, and <laughs> so we sprinkle all throughout the house. And um, we're gonna end up. I'm gonna have to end up buying a, a, a second X5000 at this point for my son because he just loves playing the games. On right. It. Right. And and they can use this. They can understand this. It's much easier for them yeah. to use. And if something breaks, it's not a big deal. And, uh, they like it. One of the machines out of the classics that I love the most, uh, just kind of a personal uh, achievement, is the 4000, not the 4000 tower I bought myself. Uh, the desktop? The actual original Amiga oh. Technologies 4000 tower. Oh, okay. A4000T. It wasn't the one I bought myself, it's the one I got the company to buy for me. Oh, nice. You know, so. That's nice. You know, but I, I looked back, it's like, did they get their money out of it? It's like, oh my God, yeah. I, I wrote a piece of software, they, they dropped off for like $1.8 million or something. And I said, like, yeah, they got their money out of it. Then some, so. Yeah, but one of the things that I loved about that at the time is that uh, CD-ROM mastering was brand new mm -hmm. at that point. PCs could not do it at all. Uh, we were just had to start rolling out, so we had our software and we were going to write it out to uh, a CD-ROM for distribution. And so we looked around and and I did some you know research on it and stuff. And it's right at that time that I was you know, they were getting new machines. It's like oh, I need to get to four thousand tower. So we ordered up this um, CD-ROM mastering software for uh, Sun OS okay. uh, and an external SCSI. Uh, Pioneer. Yeah, uh, I remember those, the, the big brown boxes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, because, of course, Sun systems were all uh, SCSI based uh, as well at that time. And I got the software on CD ROM. It was seven and a half megs in size. And I had to give the system a 512 meg uh, uh, swap partition. Oh, oh, swap partition. Yeah, just, just to, to work. Uh, it had a single progress bar, 
uh, that I saw, I'd say, okay, burn it. I, 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 we burned through 25. We had 24 failures before we got one success out of it. And I had to, I had to keep giving it more every time. It's like, okay, no, 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 now I gotta go 1x speed. Now I've got to give it, you know, a whole part dedicated partition, add another hard drive so it can cache this operation. And then we do the progress bar and display it. And it's X windows, of course, right? So it's empty. 20 minutes. Done. One step, right? Progress bar, completely useless. Because it didn't have the CPU cycles to update it. At the same time, I ordered 4000 Tower and a copy of Master ISO. Came on a floppy, 95K, completely in assembly, burned beautifully at full 4x speed with dual real time progress. <laughs> read, write, read, read, write, read, write. It was absolutely brilliant. Successful every single time. You know, it's needless to say, the, uh, the burner moved from the Sun System to the Amiga, and the Amiga burned all the. The discs, you know, cool. Cool. You know. and it wasn't until P and it wasn't until the CD-ROM manufacturers, the burners started to fix the hardware. It's like, oh, the PCs can't do it; they can't keep up. We better fix it. And they added hardware to park the laser <laughs> while it waited to stream more of the data, because it was just like literally dropping a needle on a record originally. You know, I'm just going to write it, write it. Oh, I ran out. Oh, you're done. That's a coaster. You're done. You know, I'll try again. And the PCs just couldn't do it at all. You know, at that, that generation, so the uh, so that was that was the, that's the one I like to point out. That's like one of the greatest uh, examples on a productivity because you're going from a dedicated Unix box with seven and a half megs of software, which I know by today's standard is tiny, but comparatively to you know a floppy distribution of a single 95k program that ran beautifully, and I could do absolutely everything at the same time. I mean, as, this thing would burn with a, a 68,000 and a 1 meg RAM. And I was running it on a, a, a 50 megahertz 060, you know, because I had the 060 power PC card, and that's the reason it cost five. That was from K something, K dash, the power PC. The uh, Cyberstorm. That's your uh, oh, oh, okay. Phase well, five. When you, when, you said, when you said power PC, you were talking about actual power PC, not power PC. 68K accelerator board that they had. That no, it was, was, the, was, it was the, the cyber storm. It's the cyber storm. Yeah, 060 power PC accelerator. So it had a, 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 a 50 megahertz uh, 68060 and uh, power PC 64E, I think about 200, 233 megahertz. Oh, I've got a screenshot here. Of, um, of your master ISO server. System check, CD ROM, audio, CD. Yep. Yeah, I've just pulled up a review of it. Yeah, new load's going to be probably Yeah, Master ISO was my uh, was my favorite CD ROM mastering software originally. Uh, the, the only weakness it had was uh, as new burners came out and the instruction set kind of changed, communication kind of changed. You know, once the update stopped for it. A bunch of stuff became unsupported. Yeah, it's, it became harder and harder to find a path to drive. You know. Um, so then I, I tried other ones like uh, Make CD and, yeah. and stuff like that, and they, and they work. Frying pan. Really well. Frying, frying pan. Frying um, pan. Amy DVD um, on the, uh, the X1000 does not run on the X5000. Well, it runs. It runs, but you can't burn. Uh, at all, at least I have no idea. Okay. This is the latest copy of the AI Should be. Yes. Yeah. Does it work for you? It's, I, I have something to do with the, uh, uh, the burner uh, or the SATA controller for it. I'm not positive on that. Okay. I haven't researched it too, too much, but I'd like to know if anybody with an X5000 has successfully burned a CD or DVD oh. with AVD. Oh, oh, no, actually you can't because we're solid. He hasn't finished um, uh, the TAPI support, ATA, ATI support. Ah, but you could use, use a USB CD drive. That works. I, I've tried that. It didn't want to write to it. Oh, really? Yeah, it read from it. He does. Oh, so but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't the weird thing with that is like DVD RAM desks don't work anymore on any of my machines except for the XE. <laughs> but if I put the, my, a USB drive and connect it to the 5000, the DVD RAM works. 
So you've been able to su successfully write a CD or DVD. Oh, the DVD ran. You use like it's a floppy drive, like it's a five gig yes. floppy drive. Yes. And so, and there, I was told by George Strohmeyer years ago. He's like, use DVD RAM disk. Those are supposed to be archival grade. So I've used them for years just for like backups and things. Do you need RAMs? That's what he said. Yeah, yeah they're expensive. Are they they, expensive. If they work, I'll, I'm okay. I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't bothered with optical stuff for a long time now. Yeah. I actually use that uh, mostly just to create the ISOs and save them. Oh, okay. You know, because you can directly mount the ISOs. Yeah. So they're great. it's a great archiver. Yeah, this image device is fantastic. And the little GUI that comes with it. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. It's very fast. It is very fast. I mean, you click, click, oh, it doesn't matter. It's like, you know, 20 gig uh, ISO file in it. So I, I use it primarily for mounting like ADS. Yes. Yeah. Oh, when I'm installing yes. software that I found online. <laughs> <laughs> That's just acquiring electronic versions of yeah. stuff you've already got in your collection. Right? Clearly, yes, yes, clearly, of course. Actually, if I'm honest, then um, yeah. I did like when I had my Sam and everything. It took me it took me forever to find. People who were willing to sell me a copy of Fort Worth. And somebody who was willing to sell me a copy yes. of, of, of FX Image. And somebody who was willing to uh, uh, let me buy a copy of this or that. It was hard to find. And then when I would get it, half the time they're floppies. And I had a floppy drive and a cat racing card, right? Yes. Half the time those floppies are so old, it discards. So then you bought the software, mm -hmm. but you couldn't. So then I would go and pirate it. Yeah. Because. You have to you have to find the sweet spot in the classic floppies. You got to get the set of you know like new old stock, the stuff that was yeah, produced back they when they cared. The, uh, you know about the quality of the floppies. You get you get some of those and they were great. You buy a, a new set and it's like brand new. Nine out of ten of them are junk. You know, they just you might as well not even make them at that point. It's just ridiculous. Well, but of course we got so many other options now with. Uh, uh, the floppy images and you know replacement drives and stuff like that. So at least you got that. I want to try Prime again. I haven't done that. Yet. I know there's a newer version of it, and I never tried it. I'd like to be able to burn from my uh, X5000. If I want to burn something, I've got to move over to the X1000 uh, because it does burn from there. I don't know if if, uh, if Steve is planning on doing much more work with the driver or not. I don't know what the story is. Hey Paul, is Steve doing something interesting, or is at this moment? Yeah, he looks like he's he's, he's he looks he looks he's, engrossed. He's focusing. He, that's it. Go back. Are you still filming? I don't know. Oh, you're 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 trying to get a. Any radiation project working? Uh, no, you haven't done anything yet. You just don't know how to describe Canada. I don't understand where it went. Oh, there it is. Why do you want a person who wants to code a bunch on a separate screen? I don't, I don't run it on the end. He's got just too many windows. I don't bother. I don't I want it on a separate screen. There we go. Oh, I got it. Otherwise, this happens. And you start losing yourself. Well, I 